Hello. Hello, everybody out there in Facebook land. Welcome. Welcome to goingfitbitbybit.com. So glad to see you, Eileen, and others as you're joining me here tonight from, as you can see, Times Square here in lovely Manhattan, New York City. I'm down here in Manhattan tonight for Going Fit at bitbybit.com because we're going to talk about obesity here in the United States and its relationship to cold weather and what's going on. Please go ahead and tag Michael Messner in this video. I love Michael Messner and his whole family. Glad to see you all You're here tonight. That's the big bowl up there that's going to get revealed tomorrow. As you can see, there are thousands and thousands of people down here in Times Square tonight. All having a great time. Wonder what the crazy guy is doing up here on, uh, up here on his stool. All right. We may have some connectivity issues and that's okay as we go along. Let me go ahead and start as we get going here and tell you a little bit about what's happening. Oh, all right, here we go. So glad to have you here. Okay, first of all, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about, tonight we're gonna to cover seasonality and how it relates to uh, obesity and weight loss and, and how it relates to our appetite. Uh, all, all very, very interesting stuff. Um, also, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, how we've evolved and developed our appetite and seasonality. Many folks walking around us, heat and cold, how it impacts our exercise and metabolism and how all of that works together. Uh, please let me know if you're having any difficulty hearing me as well because we do have a lot of wind and a lot of folks going around. First things first, let's talk for a second about um, obesity here in America. Uh, many of you know, uh, just last June 30th, uh, 2017, or 2016, June 30th, 2016, I weighed 330 pounds. Uh, and my lovely, lovely wife, Gina, went ahead and made me go for a walk in Ramsey. And uh, I went out and bought a Fitbit the next day and started my adventure. And now I'm down to 180 pounds. I've now lost 150 pounds. And I've started going fit, fitbybit.com. Um, obesity is a bigger problem than I even knew here in America. Uh, back in 1962, 23% of Americans uh, were obese. If you can imagine, by 1997, that number had increased to 39%. We went from 23% to 39% by 97. By 2004, the number had increased to 44%. By 2007, 56%. By 2008, more than 63% of Americans were overweight. More than 70% of children were overweight. By 27, I'm sorry, by 2010, the Center for Disease Control, uh, Center for Disease Control, has estimated that 65% of Americans are overweight. 65% of Americans. We have a national emergency on our hands. There is no doubt about it. And what is even worse is 63% of all girls in the United States by age 11 and 57% of Americans uh, in 2013, the Office of uh, uh, Economic, uh, the, the OECD, uh, has determined that 63% of all girls in the U.S. by age 11 are overweight and 57% of all Americans are obese by 2013. Uh, just staggering, staggering, staggering numbers uh, that uh, that uh, we, we see here. Don, thank you for joining. My apologies, I couldn't be here last night. Uh, anyhow, what is all of this obesity uh, led to? Well, let's take a look at that. Uh, what it's led to, first of all, if you can imagine, obesity has led to more than 400,000 deaths a year here in the United States. Yes. More than 400,000 deaths every year. Uh, obesity is a contributing factor to. What is that costing our economy? It's costing our economy more than 117 billion dollars a year. Yeah, that's with a B. More than 117 billion dollars a year. That exceeds, far exceeds the cost of smoking here in this country. And we know how damaging smoking is. Um, it accounts for more than 10 percent of our annual health care budget. Absolutely staggering. Absolutely staggering. 
Uh, very quickly before my uh, before my fingers freeze off here, I want to talk to you about some of the causes here of obesity and why that rate has increased so dramatically uh, since 1962. We were at 23% of Americans being obese, all the way up to uh, 2013, where more than 57% of Americans are obese. Uh, why has that occurred? Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, sleep deprivation. Uh, Americans are not getting enough sleep, um, so there's 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 one of the first factors, uh, sleep. Uh, and you can see a whole bunch of folks uh, coming coming down here. Uh, pollution is a factor. Uh, we have uh, an issue with uh, uh, our hormones in our body, and uh, pollution contributing to uh, an imbalance of hormones. Air conditioning, believe it or not, air conditioning and our climate control has uh, contributed uh, to our bodies uh, becoming. Uh, too efficient in summer and too efficient in winter. We're going to talk about seasonality and cold. And let me tell you, it is uh, colder than a witch's tit out here right now here in Times Square. All right. Uh, so uh, that's absolutely a contributing factor as well. Uh, just uh, 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 coming up here on my notes. Uh, also causes, can you believe, a decrease in smoking. So while we're very happy that we've had a decrease in smoking, the reality is that uh, smoking... Uh, increased uh, metabolism. Uh, so because we've done such an excellent job of decreasing smoking in America, uh, what that's done overall is that has increased uh, obesity. Uh, so that has contributed to obesity. Uh, medicines. Uh, we have much better drugs now, uh, like insulin and uh, uh, many different drugs like contraceptives, uh, steroid hormones, diabetes drugs, they're contributing to obesity. Uh, our population is uh, growing older. Uh, that's contributing to obesity as well. Uh, and some of these other factors may be controversial. We can get into them later in some of our other meetups at goingfit, bitbyvit.com, and we will in our weekly meetups. But older moms, uh, having moms who are a little bit older, uh, ancestors, uh, literally having uh, obese parents having children is contributing to it. Our genetics, uh, Engineered junk food, highly palatable engineered junk foods contributing to it, food addiction, aggressive marketing, especially towards children, uh, certain medications, uh, leptin in our, our lack of ability to deal with leptin, increased sugar in our food, and misinformation. All of these things um, are contributing to obesity uh, here in America. All of these things. All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and switch here because of the extreme cold before I lose a uh, finger. I'm going to switch here uh, my hands and uh, go ahead and put on this glove. Don't worry, Gina, if you're at home watching this, uh, I'm doing just fine. I'm going to switch out here and get this glove on. I think we're about 17 degrees out here right now. Might be a little lower. And uh, I'm gonna take this particular, this other glove off so I can get to my notes. Ah, the guy's selling the, uh, oh, there we go. The guy's handing out the, uh, the free comedy tickets have uh, done me a solid and stopped talking the, uh, the comedy tickets down here. So that's been great. Okay, uh, so let me, uh, let me move on here to the next part of this. I don't know if we're going to get a whole half an hour here tonight, but we'll do our best. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about cold weather and how this impacts uh, our appetites and uh, how this is impacting obesity, because it is actually all together. First things first, I want to talk about BAT. It's kind of brown fat that we're all born with. Uh, so BAT is actually an excellent fat, right? And humans, oh, every time I do that, my phone switches over. Uh, it's a brown fat. We're born with it. Uh, we're born, uh, uh, we just recently found out that we're, uh, we're born with uh, a bunch of it. Uh, it's the kind of fat that you uh, accumulate when you exercise in the cold, uh, which is an excellent thing. Uh, here we go, here we go. Uh, there we go, people are smiling, that's all good, that's all good. I'm sorry, I just wanna get down my notes here. It's a little hard while I'm having to hold this up. This is the first time I've had to hold it. I'm gonna have to get a cameraman. Anybody of you out there wanna volunteer to be cameraman, you're more than welcome to. 
All right, here come my notes. Brown adipose tissue increases the metabolic rate, and it sure does, which is why when you exercise, when you exercise, you have, uh, 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 in the cold, you get more of this uh, brown adipose tissue, uh, and increasing your metabolic rate is a great thing. Until recently, it was thought that our BAT that we're born with uh, is lost in adulthood. We realize that it's not, uh, which is a fantastic thing. Uh, here's what we want to talk about, though. When we sleep in cool environments uh, with long nights in the winter, uh, that absence of artificial light uh, in the warmth, in the warmth uh, it works synergistically to promote the conservation of valuable calories uh, in the time of year when the calories are naturally scarce, or at least they were before modern times, right? Uh, we have melatonin, right? That's a hormone that naturally contributes um, to sleep, which is fantastic. It, it acts actually to lower the core body temperature, which is fantastic. Uh, and associated with sleep and the onset of quality sleep, right? Okay, so I'm just going to read a little bit more of this, and then we'll have a discussion around it here, right? So, winter's cold, dark, and still environment is a natural balance to our summer's right, warm, bright, and active environment. So, the thing is, though, nowadays in our modern world, right? Nowadays in the modern world, very few of us sleep in the cold, right? Our bedrooms are all warm, right? And studies have shown that the association between weight gain and average room temperature absolutely exists, right? So what's happened here is that because now that we have warmth in the room in the winter, now that we're no longer sleeping in freezing cold bear dens, if you will, um, it's contributing to our overall obesity and our overall problems. So the question is, you know, what can we do about that? Um, the first thing is we need to recognize, right? We need to recognize that we are uh, working against, oops, there we go. We're working against uh, uh, nature, if you will, and we're working against our own evolution, okay? Uh, that's something, sorry about that. Okay, thanks, I'm glad you're all back. Okay, we had a little problem with connectivity. Sorry about that. All right, so the first thing to recognize is that we are actually working against uh, uh, nature and our own revolution, our own evolution, right? Um, once we, got to put this on because it's so cold. Once we recognize that, right, once we recognize that what's really going on here is that within winter, when we're sleeping in the warmer rooms, right, and I know many of you do turn, turn those thermostats down at night, when we're sleeping in those warmer rooms, right, and when we're using those alarm clocks to wake us up to get to work, and we all do have to get to work, when we're doing all those things, what's happening is those things are increasing our appetite and then we throw Thanksgiving and Christmas and all these things in around them. We're literally uh, uh, just asking to pack on those pounds, right? So if all those things are happening to us, what can we do to counteract, right? To counteract these, these very natural things, right? The, the natural, we're, we're counteracting all of these natural things that our body's trying to, to do to us, right? To make us uh, not eat as much food, right? Well, we need to come up with other ways. For myself, the issue I know that, I, that I've that i had is around this leptin, right? Now, I don't know if the issue is I'm not producing enough leptin or I don't have the leptin receptor, but the leptin is once it gets to the brain, right, it tells you to stop eating. And I've talked before about uh, some of my children, and I see it with them where they'll eat and they'll eat, and I know they've had enough food, and this is how I am as well, right? And I just want to keep eating, right? I just want to keep eating and eating and eating. So clearly, uh, whatever the leptin, the leptin receptor is going on, it's not working, right? Something there is not working. Well, what's happened with me, and one of the reasons I was able to lose all that weight, is through using my Fitbit, and I wear that Fitbit 24 hours a day. And I was talking to some folks from Silicon Valley last night, and uh, we kind of made a, a major breakthrough here. The major breakthrough was, uh, I'm so fortunate, so happy to have Fitbit, and so fortunate to be alive with Fitbit and have that around now. But what's really going on here is, where, and I apologize if there's a lot of windows, but what's going on here is that we're a company that's focused now on these devices that are actually measuring metabolic rate. That's what's happening. The devices are measuring the metabolic rate. So what do I mean by that? 
The device on my wrist is measuring how many calories I'm actually burning as the day goes on. And because it's measuring how many calories I'm actually burning as the day goes on, as I input how many calories I'm eating into my device, right? It's telling me, oh, it's okay, you can keep eating calories, right? You can have another apple, you can have another more cottage cheese, you can, you can, uh, you can have another half slice of pizza, you know, whatever I may be eating, right? Because for me, the leptin isn't working, right? For me, when I'm full, that signal's not getting up to my brain, right? Um, and I see that now in my children as well. And so that's that's the issue. So what's great is my little device here, right? Which you can barely see because it's all uh, you can. Barely... All right, we're back. So for me, my device. So for me, my device. Ah, just fell out of here. in here and then just switch hands so everybody can hear there we go so for me that device is literally giving me the feedback as I go along today so I was talking to a client uh, today and um, they were recognizing that too that they were the same way they were having that emotional eating caused by the cold right it caused by the cold where they are in they are in their home it's winter time everything's going well they want to snuggle down they are using their alarm clocks to wake up in the morning they're not like a bear right they can't afford to just sleep and sleep and sleep and let their let their body and hormones take over um they do have to wake up in the morning and get to work right um they, they can't become bears right and, and so their body is naturally working against them, right? And so they are entering into the emotional uh, part of this. And um, they need a way to recognize when is it they have to stop eating, right? When, how, how, how can they stop eating? And, they, and, and we made this connection. We made it last night when we were talking to the folks uh, uh, who were aware of Fitbits from and they're from Silicon Valley. So what we're really doing is that we're a company who's, who's working with uh, Fitbits, but we're really a company who's working with the devices that are reading the metabolic rates, right? Because you're wearing Fitbit 24-7, right? That's what's happening. You're wearing the Fitbit 24-7. It's measuring the metabolic rate. You're putting your food into your smartphone, and it's telling you to continue to eat. That's what's really and that's kind of the magic of it. And then that's how you lose all of it. And that's the, that's how it works. That's how it works. So, I think tonight, that's about as cold as everything gets. That's about as uh, happening as everything gets. I hope you've enjoyed watching here from uh, down here in uh, Times Square. I'm sure tomorrow night, things are gonna get crazy, especially up there with that, uh, that magic ball that's happening. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little meetup tonight, and uh, everybody have a great time, enjoy yourselves, and uh, we'll see you all soon. See you later. Bye-bye.